我哋誒九。Right, members, uh, I think it's time to start the meeting, and we've got a quorum already. Members, we uh, have one session uh, today, and then uh, tomorrow we're going to have a meeting, and uh, we'll also be having a meeting on the 14th of February to um, deal with um, the items on the agenda. Yesterday, the uh, Secretariat. Um, issued a notice to members asking members whether they um, would agree to having two more sessions on the 14th of February. Members, please reply by noon tomorrow, and the Secretariat will um, inform members of the outcome of um, the consultation exercise and will also confirm the meeting arrangements of members. And concerning members' concerns about the scheduling of items on our agenda, I've already asked the Secretariat to arrange um, for a special meeting to be held in March to discuss um, the issue, and the administration will be uh, invited to attend the meeting. I want to remind members that if members have any direct or indirect uh, pecuniary interest in matters being discussed today. Please, before you speak, disclose the nature of the um, interest under ROP 83A. And I would like to draw members' attention to um, voting arrangements for members of direct pecuniary interest stipulated in ROP 84. And we'll now uh, discuss two um, Items on our agenda uh, jointly. FCR 36 uh, on the post to be created um, for the establishment of the new um, IT Bureau and also FCR 37 um, paper on the um, expenditure and also the um, establishment ceiling for the new Bureau. Under the um, FC Rules uh, 37A, members need to um, indicate clearly um, uh, what items they would like to uh, comment on. And uh, after we've discussed um, the papers, we will... Uh, deal with um, the, all the other related issues. And today, we have with us um, Mr. Greg So, um, Secretary, Ms. Susie Holder, Permanent Secretary, Mr. Joe Wong, Deputy Secretary, Ms. Janet Wong, Commissioner for Innovation and Technology, Mr. Uh, John Wong, Deputy Commissioner for Innovation and Technology, Mr. Victor Lam, Acting Government Chief Information Officer, and Ms. Joey Lam, Deputy Government Chief Information Officer. On the 3rd of February, and two members um, uh, spoke on the proposal, and then there are four members um, who would like to speak, and they um, belong to the first round. Ms. Emily Lau, Mr. Wong Kwok Hei, Mr. Wong Ting Kwong, Ms. Claudia Mo. I would like to remind members that um, their questions must be directly related to the content of the papers um, on the agenda. Concerning broader policy issues, um, members can raise them in the relevant panel or in the LegCo sitting. Members should not repeat points um, that other members have made. Ms. Emily Lau. Now, concerning um, the um, holding of um, um, special meetings. Um, Chairman, you said that uh, there would be a meeting for us to discuss the issue in March, but then uh, you also said that there would be um, two more sessions. So do you think um, this approach is fair? Is it that uh, you're always um, um, giving in to the um, um, request of um, the government. Um, so, uh, Ms. Emily Lau, you're a very experienced member. Yes, I have um, really um, relatively more experience. Um, and I think, um, Ms. Lau, um, you should understand that, in fact, there is little that the chairman can do. The administration has um, uh, requested um, additional meetings. And, in fact, um, there is an element of 
urgency uh, in relation to these items because they relate to the 2014-2015 estimates. And then um, concerning this um, point that the member is raising, I think... Uh, uh, I've already tried to schedule um, a special meeting to discuss the met, uh, meeting as um, early as possible. Now, but um, there will, I've uh, um, arranged um, for a meeting in March. Uh, we're going to have um, um, a break in February, also in in March, as members are aware. And uh, I hope that we can have a meeting on the second of March, and the secretary and his colleagues will be invited to attend. I understand that um, you are unhappy, but I hope that you understand that, um, in fact, I may not be very um, happy about this either. But then, as you know, I have um, my duties um, to discharge, and Mrs., um, Mr. Lee Chuck Yan, I hope that um, we will not um, go on discussing this um, issue at this meeting anymore. Now, Chairman, in fact, I... Um, used to be the chairman, but I, I, I understand the difficulty, but I think uh, you should also consult members. You shouldn't, shouldn't just ask the secretariat to um, uh, issue a written notice um, to members. Now, uh, um, in uh, the, um, when the XRL item was discussed, I, um, in fact, I had a discussion with members, and I hope that, uh, Chairman, you understand that um, uh, you have to come, um, uh, you, you have to command the respect of um, the members, or else the credibility um, of the whole FC will suffer. And uh, please do not. Um, um, make people feel that um, whatever the administration asks you to do, you follow the uh, administration's instructions. In fact, um, we are not the servants of um, um, the administration. Now, I have all along acted fairly and impartially, and I understand that it's important that I must uphold the uh, credibility and the dignity of the um, uh, Chairman of the FC, so we have to. Uh, of course, I need to consult all 69 members of the FC. So, what what do you expect us to do, Chairman? Now, I hope that you understand that I do not accede to uh, the administration's request every time. In fact, they um, need to give me uh, five uh, working days of notice. Yesterday, um, between 1 to 2 p.m., no, at about 11 a.m., I received a letter from the administration, and I decided to give members two days to make a decision. It's for FC members to decide whether they want additional meetings or additional sessions, but I simply don't have time to um, approach each member and ask him or her whether he um, or she wants a meeting. In fact, some members um, um, seem not to be willing to talk to me anymore. But uh, Mr. Lee Chuck-Yang was friendly when I met him the other day. Um, so um, I really don't have sufficient time to approach um, all members individually. And they've um, given me um, five uh, working days notice. And so um, I... Well, now, um, like to um, know members' decision. In fact, uh, in the lift, Mr. Chen Chi Chun asked me uh, why uh, the FC had to um, have um, additional um, sessions. I hope that members will understand, however, uh, my work and my difficulty. So, Ms. Emily Lau, um, five minutes, the first round. Mr. Lee Chuck Yang. Um, the scheduling of items on our agenda will only be discussed in March, Chairman. But then uh, you said you received a letter from the administration yesterday. Um, the uh, item on the fisheries development uh, loan fund uh, was withdrawn by the um, administration. Um, now I want to say that um, this is um, a very unusual uh, practice. Uh, in fact, it hasn't been done for 30 years. 
So this can only be discussed in March, and by that time, the four items uh, will already have gone um, into the budget. So if we wait till March. Then the uh, four items will have gone into the appropriation bill on the 25th of February, and so concerning the marine police, the fire engines, and also the um, IT platform for schools. What what will happen to these items? And uh, will the four items um, be able to be included in the appropriation bill? And uh, so uh, you received, or we received, uh, there was the paper issued by the administration yesterday, and um, it was said that um, um, th this um, approach has not been adopted uh, in recent years, and the last time they did it was in uh, eighty five, eighty six under Section three. So perhaps we should give the administration a chance to explain its position. Um, so yesterday, you um, wrote a letter to the FC, and before your letter arrived, um, the administration's letter um, had arrived. Your letter. Uh, contains um, questions on some details, and some of your questions have been answered. Some have not been answered. And you wanted uh, a reply from a le from the legal adviser. In fact, I forwarded your letter to the administration, and uh, in the administration's letter, some of your concerns have been addressed, and some haven't been addressed. So we'll uh, allow the administration some more time to address your remaining points. And after the administration has issued its reply, the legal advisor will um, be having a meeting with the um, administration. Should we um, hold a special meeting? On a Sunday uh, before Budget Day to discuss um, your concerns, but I want to say that we, we our decision won't be or our recommendation won't be binding on the administration. They may still include certain items in the appropriation bill. And concerning additional sessions um, on the 14th of February, I did try to ask members, um, um, but then uh, some members. In fact, um, maybe um, out of town, and we have we're going to have a lot of meetings on the 16th and the 17th, and um, um, we won't be able to um, find a suitable venue. I will be in Hong Kong during the Chinese New Year period, but then. Um, I will uh, have to schedule that special meeting um, after the Chinese New Year period, and I have um, suggested the second of March. But then, we'll, of course, we'll have to see whether the secretary can come. So I'm trying my best. And I, um, and I really don't think that. Um, um, our um, suggestion can really bind the administration in any way, even if we are to have that special meeting before budget day. And we have to await the administration's reply, and then the legal advisor will have to have some discussion with the administration after that. So I think we do need sufficient time for all these steps. Perhaps you can uh, invite the secretary to um, give a reply while you're adopting an approach that uh, was um, used 30 years ago. Mr. Um, Leung Kwok Hong, I think the proposed arrangements are wrong. You may think that the arrangements are not in order, but then this is um, um, uh, within my um, Authority as the chairman, but then ma many members will be at the uh, NPC and CPPCC meeting. So who will be at the meeting? We have uh, five NPC members, six CPPCC members. So we have still have a lot of members present. Call. Please rest assured, we all have a part to play to form a quorum. I cannot accommodate people who take leave or who will have NPC SC or NPC and CPPCC meetings. 
the secretary, would you like to respond? Actually, at the last meeting, we have told members the reasons why we put the four items into the appropriation bill. The letter only served to list the detailed consideration and explanation. I have nothing to add here, but I will be very glad to attend finance committee meetings in the future to explain the matter to members. Mr. Lee Chuck Yen, he does not even want to say this in public. Well, on my agenda, I don't have this section for you to speak to the secretary. But since you were asking questions, I already gave you the floor to speak your mind, and you asked the secretary to speak up. He already did. We will have more time for this later. Ms. Emily Lau, first round, five minutes. I'm looking at the schedule on the 14th. The second session will end at 12.40, but the third session will start at 1.10. We don't even have time for lunch, but that is Valentine's Day. It is quite inhuman. Who set that schedule? Was it you or the administration? It is a Valentine's Day on Saturday. Miss Emily Lau, you are using your time. Of course, I know. It is Valentine's Day. In fact, I had an, a, a date with my wife for the entire day. You mean she will come here in the public gallery to look at you? I think she will be watching television. But please be more human. Well, look at my name. In my name, there is the word human. That is why I'm, all, of course, human. How come you allow that schedule when they just wrote a letter to you? If you accept this schedule, why don't you start? The meeting at 6 a.m. Miss Emily Lau, no, this is my time. Well, I thank you for telling the administration that they still have time for two more sessions. No, I'm warning Mr. C.K. Chan. Chairman, by doing what you are doing, you are inviting interference from the administration. If you are so obliged, the administration might well write you another letter and then the deadline is really 12 midnight on that day. So people can ask you to even schedule more sessions. Please defend your dignity. I am chairman. Don't call me Fat Man Chung. Please, chairman, please do not allow people to twist you around their little finger like that. Well, I think um, you are also twisting me around your little finger. But you really have to do some deep reflection on yourself. It seems the administration can do whatever with you, but the Finance Committee has its own dignity. Now I come to my question. Amongst the officials, we have Ms. Janet Wong. We really love her. She is the Commissioner for Innovation and Technology. Why do I say we all love her? Whenever we have an item related to her portfolio, she is always here. She will always come. And then we always support her initiatives. We would always say, you don't have enough money. Please seek more funding. And Ms. Wong would always say, yes, my colleagues do envy me. Look at the two directors sitting in front of you. They do not have the same kind of treatment from us. So we love the commissioner. but. Um, the Commissioner can bear witness to the fact that we support the item. However, there is not much she can do. There are things that relate to the industry and other bureaus and departments. And we were asking, even with a new bureau, a new secretary, would that help? You're all here. We wanted to include more things. You were uh, not going to budge if the Commissioner can be given a lot more money. As you know, the academics and the industry do come here to say, uh, why is it that when all legislative councillors back you up, why can't you do more things, Commissioner? So first of all, we support the item. We just want to do more. Mr. Vincent Fang is not here. Mr. Wang Ting Kong is here at the panel. We support this initiative. But then it is the arrangement, the operation this time around. You make people think that you do not have your heart in developing science and technology. Whoever will answer the question, I don't care. But I'd like to know why, when we support you at the panel, why the commissioner has not been able to do a good job within her portfolio. 
the secretary. We'd like to set up the Bureau um, on Science or Innovation and Technology. So we want to put emphasis on innovation and technology. And we have heard the member. And it's exactly because of this that we'd like to have a dedicated bureau to develop innovation and technology. This is ridiculous. You mean that is an answer? Let us know why the present framework or structure of government cannot do it. Why is it that with a new bureau, people will cooperate with you? Now the commissioner has her hands tied. Do you know about it? Judging from your expression, you just don't know that the commissioner has her hands tied. No, Chairman, we'd like to have a dedicated bureau. It is clear that the industry supports the setting up of this INT Bureau. Well, don't repeat the same sentence. This is not the way to give a reply at the Finance Committee. Next member, Mr. Wong Kwok Hing. Five minutes, first round. Thank you, Chairman. Chairman, as we all know, whether the INT Bureau can be set up within this term of government, It has everything to do with the deadline of the 14th of February 2015. We need to have the item endorsed at the Finance Committee before that deadline, or else it will be very difficult for the Bureau to be set up within this term of government. Therefore, we need to do something within this term. Mr. Chairman, until this moment, I can say that you have acted as a fair chairman and you have been able to deal with matters in an agile manner. Uh, we are not asking you to step down. If someone asks you to step down, it must be the opposition camp. Therefore, before the 14th of February, if it is because of filibustering on the part of the opposition camp, so we are compelled to have more meetings, I will support that. The opposition camp is filibustering and the Finance Committee is forced to hold more meetings. I don't only support that. I would say if we had to have meetings overnight, I would be obliged. They are always starting motions and invoking 37A to suspend the meeting or to adjourn the item, I I'm sure they are going to do it unless we have overnight meetings or else we cannot finish the item. And of course, the alternative is for you to stop the filibustering in your capacity as chairman. I think those are the, the only two possible means to carry on with the item. Of course, everyone would like to spend a day with uh, their, inter their very close ones on Valentine's Day, but who is making that impossible? I think all people in Hong Kong are seeing that it is the opposition camp who is preventing us to spend a day with our intimate ones on Valentine's Day. I'm happy to fight this battle with you on Valentine's Day. You are not my lover, but we are compelled to sacrifice Valentine's Day. If necessary, I am willing to have a meeting um, throughout the night on Valentine's Day. Chairman, the INT Bureau should be something the present term of government does. This is not going to be for the glory of CY Leung. It is for the development of the innovation and technology industry in Hong Kong, and this is also good for the future of Hong Kong. Frankly, Hong Kong cannot just depend on property development, services, tourism, and the finances. We cannot all just engage in speculation. Many university graduates cannot find a decent job. They become a property agent. Uh, they would be in suits, but they are just touting customers. This is very sad. This is what our graduates are doing. We do not have industries. We also have scarcity of land, but a huge population. Where lies our future? 
if we do not develop innovation and technology, how can we face the Hong Kong people? I can see legislators are using public money to take study tours to South Korea, the U.S., Israel, and even France and Germany. When they came back, they would tell us they had seen great things. They used public money to learn from others. But then now they are back, they put barriers on the setting up of the INT Bureau. I also like to ask the opposition camp. You used public money to take these study tours, but then the public in fact criticized you for just taking pleasure trips. And now you come back, you want to make it impossible for us to set up the INT Bureau. Please do some soul searching. How can you face the Hong Kong people? Mr. Wang Ting Kuang, first round, five minutes. Thank you, Chairman. I don't really want to say too much now that we end up in this um, stalemate. I think the people of Hong Kong will understand this very much when they watch television uh, and this broadcast. As I understand it, we must have the INT Bureau because the Bureau will make policies. I hope there will be a dedicated Bureau to formulate long-term policies for Hong Kong's future economic development. If we have the Bureau, we can make policies, we can deploy resources. The Bureau will be able to do it proactively. Ms. Janet Wong heads a commission, but it is an executive department. The Bureau and this commission have different nature of work. I like to tell the people of Hong Kong um, that is my understanding as a legislator. My question is, after the setting up of the INT Bureau, what will happen to the six research centers we now have? What will happen? Will the work of these six research centers be helped or promoted, or will you start research in other areas? That is the first question. Second question. The research products from these centers, how can they be put to practical use? This is what we really want to see, and this is what needs to be done. After the setting up of the INT Bureau, what can it do in this respect? What will be the impact of the new bureau in this respect? Secretary, thank you, Mr. Wong, for your question. We'd like to set up the INT Bureau, and Mr. Wong, you are correct. We can be more dedicated in terms of policy making. Within the CNED Bureau, uh, we will be moving some of our work to the new bureau. There will be a new bureau secretary. He or she will have more time to do this. Mr. Wong asked whether there will be other research areas apart from the six research centers. Now, of course, the new Bureau Secretary will bring with him and her or her new thinking and about the application of research products. And Mr. Wong asked what could be done. I'm sure the new Bureau Secretary will look at the Internet of Things, which is developing fast. I'm sure the new Bureau Secretary will look into this aspect as to what else will be taken up by the research centers. Maybe I can ask Ms. Wong to give you a reply. Ms. Wong, thank you, Chairman. If there is a Bureau, then we'll be able to get more support and resources um, to carry out interdisciplinary studies and research. So if um, there are new policies or policy directions, say for example if there are um, areas uh, which are becoming increasingly important, then new R&D centers may be set up. 
Then as to whether the present mode of operation of our R&D um, centers is the most efficient, there can be studies and there can be improvements. Commercialization of um, um, R&D outcome. I understand that members are very concerned and want us to do more. And so the policy bureau may introduce um, new policies um, and um, relate such new policies with uh, other policies like procurement policies. Thank you very much. Mr. Wong Ting Kuang. Yes, I wish to follow up, Chairman. I want to know how the new ITB will work with local universities to promote um, innovation and technology so that our young people will have more career opportunities. Um, Secretary, so we are exploring ways to step up cooperation among the government, the academia, um, and the um, industry, and um, we will strengthen our uh, efforts um, in these respects. Ms. Andrula, in fact, uh, LegCo passed a resolution um, for the setting up of the IT Bureau. And uh, I think the fate of this bureau is now in the hands of the opposition camp and members who like to filibuster. But I want to say that um, this matter affects Hong Kong's economic development and Hong Kong's future. The Federation of Industries has all along expressed its support for the setting up of the bureau. Uh, traditional industries um, coupled with innovation and technology can um, bring um, good economic prospects to Hong Kong, say, um, 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 uh, 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 I think uh, yesterday the Federation uh, went on a visit to Huichou. Uh, it was a glass factory and um, it used to be a small factory but now um, it is uh, involved in the production of um, touch panels and the annual turnover is um, over $30 billion. Um, many people say that um, the size of the uh, Shenzhen economy will um, surpass that of Hong Kong this year. So you may th um, think um, um, uh, this is bad for Hong Kong and good for the mainland. You, um, Shenzhen used to be um, um, quite backwards, um, and uh, I think we can all in, uh, remember what low was like uh, decades ago. But then uh, it seems that they're going to surpass us very soon. I, and I also want to remind members that uh, IT is but one uh, aspect or element of innovation and technology. So we're not only talking about the development of information technology. So um, the Federation supports the um, creation of a bureau in Shenzhen in the mainland. Tax rebates are offered. So for enterprises or businesses, um, which can make profits, they can get a tax uh, a refunds, tax refunds. So it's better than providing simply um, incentives in the form of rebates. I think it's important that we offer the right incentive to entrepreneurs. Thank you. Secretary, yes, we hope to um, provide and create more room for Development Chairman, we understand that we need to provide incentives to um, entrepreneurs and um, businesses concerning the R&D cash rebate system. In fact, it is better than um, cash uh, or rather a tax refund arrangements in uh, other places. But I uh, still thank Mr. Leung for his comments. It is true, Chairman, that in Shenzhen, um, 
um, development uh, or very good development has uh, taken place in many respects. And um, I think um, we can learn from Shenzhen. Um, we'll continue to encourage uh, startup companies to be set up in Hong Kong. We hope that they can make use of the um, advantages here to produce prototypes. And then uh, together with the development in Shenzhen, uh, we should be able to attract uh, further foreign investments. Mr. Long. In fact, we have seen successful examples of collaboration between Hong Kong and Shenzhen and between Hong Kong and the Pearl River Delta. How can you make sure that such cooperation can be stepped up in the future? Some companies have their R&D centers in Hong Kong, but they have their manufacturing bases in the mainland. And sometimes R&D has to be carried out jointly by local and mainland universities. So how can you promote these activities? Yes, Chairman, we are will continue to promote cooperation among the government, the academia, and the um, industry. The new bureau, if set up, will formulate long-term development strategies for the promotion of innovation and technology. Mr. Dennis Kwok, five minutes uh, since uh, it's only the first round. I would like to ask a question about um, paper EC7, Chairman. Uh, I understand that the new uh, bureau is supposed to take over policy responsibility from the CEDB uh, in relation to uh, the promotion of innovation and technology. In the C, uh, the CDB is responsible for creative industries, communications, telecommunications, and broadcasting. And all these um, portfolios will remain under the CEDB. So, what, uh, why is it that uh, policies in relation to creative industries will not be transferred to the new bureau? Why is it that um, some um, elements uh, will be transferred to the, or some some of the functions will be transferred to the new bureau, while others will remain under the CEDB? Um, so, how can you assure us that the INT bureau will be providing dedicated leadership on innovation and um, technology matters, and also the um, IPD? will remain under the CEDB. We all understand that intellectual property is closely related to innovation and technology. As uh, the ITB will be responsible for the promotion of innovation and technology, why is it that intellectual property will still remain under the CEDB? No wonder why people are criticizing um, that um, <coughs> the work of the two bureaus may duplicate each other. I think it's logical to transfer all functions related to innovation and technology to the new bureau. This is important. Some members may support the um, uh, Establishment of the new bureau, some may oppose um, the proposal, but I think we are duty bound to ask these questions which relate to the use of public funds. We are not filibustering. We want really to know whether the uh, establishment of the new bureau can really effectively and efficiently promote the development of innovation and technology in Hong Kong. Please do not. Um, think um, all members who are asking questions and who are seeking clarifications are filibustering. Secretary, um, Mr. Kwok uh, wants to know why creative industries and intellectual 
property uh, will not uh, come under the new bureau. In fact, um, we have um, given replies to the IT panel and in fact the CIP and the ITBP have already expressed support for the setting up of the new bureau. We hope that the ITB can um, concentrate on the development of innovation and technology. In fact, we are open-minded. We'll uh, let the um, new bureau operate for some time, and then we will um, look at whether creative industries should also come under the new bureau. And then uh, concerning IP, um, um, intellectual property rights also involve um, brand building, and um, these um, have to do with um, economic development. But then the new bureau will focus on innovation and technology. So we'll let the uh, bureau operate for some time, and then uh, we can um, refine the framework if necessary. Mr. Kwok. Uh, Mr. So, you said that the uh, policy aspects had already be di been discussed by the um, relevant panels, and today we should only discuss um, financial issues. Now, um, if my question had been um, out of order, the uh, um, chairman would have ruled my question out of order. I want to say that I'm concerned about policy matters, and I'm going to um, continue to pursue policy matters in my second, third, and fourth rounds. Um, but then, uh, Mr. Kwok, um, in my introduction, I said that for broader policy issues, members should raise them in the relevant panel. Now, I um, t um, tend to err uh, on the more relaxed side uh, in the first round and in the second round. I understand that um, some members um, are not members of the relevant policy panel, and so they may want to raise some policy issues at the at finance committee meeting. But it doesn't mean that uh, members can continue to pursue broad policy issues here in the finance committee. Mr. Fernando Zhang, I think Mr. Dennis Kwok's question is about a fundamental issue, and I think it has to do with um, the financial aspect of the proposal. We have to uh, make sure that um, all the relevant policy functions are transferred to the new bureau. Now, Chairman, as you are aware, uh, none of us can sit on each and every panel of the Council. This is a major uh, funding application. We are t talking about the creation of a new bureau. And I think um, it would be very um, wrong and inappropriate uh, to disallow questions on broader policy issues. I think Mr. Dennis Kwok's question is a reasonable one. Um, the former secretary for CIT uh, or SCT, Mr. Joseph Wong, uh, did uh, make some remarks. Um, of course, Donald Zhang changed the name of the bureau to the CEDB. And now uh, it is um, recommended that a new bureau be set up, and uh, this is um, to be called the Innovation and Technology Bureau. My understanding is that this uh, bureau um, should be closely related to um, the, develop the development of creative industries, to communications, uh, in Hong Kong, Wong Kwok Heng said that um, in Hong Kong there weren't um, too many job opportunities for our young people. Uh, is he uh, dreaming? We have the ITC. We uh, have injected $5 billion uh, into the uh, IT fund. And um, a total of $900 million have been allocated to the five R&D centers. Um, there were three major exercises in 2005, 2009, and 2012. And we've injected funds into the Film Development Fund. And we've also got the Science Park. So how much money have we spent on the promotion of um, 
innovation and technology, and uh, the uh, functions and duties of this new bureau are not clear. You call this innovation and technology bureau, but then communications, broadcasting, creative industries, media, film, IP, as Mr. Dennis Quat was saying, they will still remain with the CNE uh, bureau, CNED bureau. I don't understand it. If you want to develop innovation and technology, you should not delink it from communications. INT have has everything to do with the creative media development. These these are fundamental questions. You say you have answered all these questions, but you have not replied to them. You said something, but you did not give a reply. Well, yes, at the panels you always get endorsement because you have enough people there supporting you. But here we are reasoning with you, and we are telling you that there is duplication, that things are still very confusing. So, Secretary, I will give you time to clarify the issue. Thank you, Mr. Zheng, for your question. And maybe Dr. Zheng does not understand certain things. We do not have creative industry fund. We have the innovation and technology fund. We do not have any creative technology bureau, but innovation and technology bureau and creative industries is something else. I was answering Mr. Dennis Kwok, and I said we have an open mind. But we hope the INT Bureau will be able to concentrate on the development of INT. Creative industries will not come under the policy jurisdiction of the INT Bureau. We will allow the INT Bureau to be up and kicking for some time, and then we will review whether other policy areas can be subsumed under the INT Bureau. No, Secretary, you have to explain the difference. What do you mean by innovation has nothing to do with creativity? Please explain to me why INT um, is not related to film, IP, creative industries, broadcasting and communication. Secretary, INT can be applied um, if you talk about a design, it is a creative industry, but even our architects can be said to be part of the creative industry. So you cannot say that since INT will include creativity, you want to put uh, creative industries under the INT Bureau. Thank you, Ms. Priscilla Leung, first round, five minutes. Yes, Chairman, we had wanted to set up the Culture Bureau and also INT Bureau. In the last term of the LegCo, members themselves raised these. I remember Mr. Tam Wai Ho was trying to secure this. And also in moving a motion debate on the water quality at our waterfront. I remember the Democratic Party then suggested to have a Bureau on Culture. But then we ourselves here negated the setting up of these bureaus at the LegCo. I myself have expectations of the INT Bureau. However, I'm worried that once it becomes part of the establishment, it will become like any other civil service department and it will not be able to function. So, Secretary, let me tell you my expectations of this bureau. Our young people must be more creative than our generation. Many of them may not be happy with Hong Kong's governance, but they will be able to make use of a small cost but applying their brain power, they can still have very good development. Mr. Jack Ma is one example. Now, of course, they have to learn to grasp the opportunities. However, young people may not be very skilled at that. They need assistance. I think the INT Bureau will, of course, work according to its jurisdiction, but it should outreach to the people with potential in society to help them really expound their potential and commercialize their products. Of course, the universities are our knowledge banks, 
but the academia do not know how to commercialize their research products, and they go to waste. I have seen examples where you say people will have to produce a good product so they can apply for funding, but then sometimes they don't go to that stage. I think you should be proactive to identify these people with talent. Some people just stay at home and play with the computer, but then. Suddenly, they can come up with a very good online invention. So you have to try to identify and search for these people. I myself am sure the younger generation will excel in that. On the other hand, people who have inventions and innovation may be weak in networking with others. The mainland is a big market. And、uh, I have seen students of mine coming from the Americas or Europe. They ask us to help them go to Tianhai, go to Shenzhen, because they see a big market there. So Hong Kong young people who would like to have their own startups should be helped by you. But I think this is going to be interbureau, and the INT bureau must be there to act as a bridge. Amongst the bureaus, you have to know that we give you the support because we want you to chart a new path. The PA says there will be a youth、um, fund with three hundred million dollars. I hope you will not give it to the NGOs because NGOs spend money only. Now these people, these young people, have the idea. I hope you will help them succeed. I hope you can allow the Youth Development Fund to approve projects which are not like social enterprises. I hope you will give people the seed money so young people can put into practice their innovation. We will be very happy to give you the money you need. The next generation is a generation of innovation and technology, and our. Generation will not be making that breakthrough. Secretary, thank you, Ms. Leung, for supporting the setting up of the INT Bureau. I'm sure the new bureau will give ample consideration to her ideas. Any follow-up? I think you should have G to G communication with Tianhai so as to develop more opportunities. Maybe you can ask Tianhai to give you land. At a、uh, re very reasonable premium for people to have start startups there, I'm sure the new bureau will be able to talk to other governments about this. Mr. Chow Smock, five minutes, first round. Chairman, over the last decade or so, I have always backed the revival of a bureau on INT. We used to have the ITB bureau. The structure was a little different from what is being proposed, but I think it is always better to have a bureau than not having one, at least policy-wise. In the five years when we had the ITBB,、uh, we had the Cyberpol Science Park, the Astri, and also Electronic Transactions Ordinance. A lot has been accomplished in just a matter of five years. But then now we have the CEDB, and、uh, Nothing has been done to add to what we already had. We said there should be a comprehensive review and consultation on the electronic transactions ordinance, but then you do not have time to do it. So objectively, we need to have new policies, and new policies are related to a dedicated bureau. Recently, a program host, Mr. Wang Wing, wrote in an article to say. That within the government structure, if we have the INT bureau, then、uh, if it is upgraded to a bureau with independent policy, there will be help done to internal coordination. If you look at、uh, Singapore, they have the、uh, bureau on communications and innovation.、Uh, so does South Korea, and so does Taiwan, and even in on the mainland, we have.、Um, The relevant ministry. So unless you tell me you don't need a dedicated bureau because you are particularly bright and you can still do the same thing, but I'm sure you will tell me you need a new bureau. 
I believe the government structure should continue to be reformed. We should not stop now. Um, the countries I mentioned are doing it uh, government after government. And at the LegCo, we have heard members say many times that our economic um, makeup should not just concentrate on property development and financial industry. And I'm sure the first choice is for us to go down the innovation and technology route. That is the world trend. And in uh, 2003 and before that, we used to have the ITBB, and Singapore was trying to catch up with us. But now we have been superseded by Singapore, and a member was saying that the size of the Shenzhen economy will catch up with Hong Kong very soon and may even supersede us. Given the present political atmosphere, the administration is taken to task how it approaches the Finance Committee. And some people are worried about internet security because people say the administration might step up uh, surveillance on the internet by having this bureau. But I have always said that the use of technology will mean that um, countries or governments can continue to try to do surveillance on the net, but then they will not be able to do it because technology will allow the world to be freer and communication to be freer and will encourage the government to do the same so the entire system can open up. Our responsibility is to continue to monitor the government, and uh, I truly believe this is not done through putting barriers. I'm not happy with the present term of government and the present CE. And you can see how difficult it is for you to change the structure one bit. And I believe if you have the bureau set up, you will not be able to kill it easily either. I think it will be easier for the CE to go if you want to kill off the bureau after it is set up. And I'm sure we want to block intentions to put barriers on internet freedom. And in the long term, we should have confidence in it. And our responsibility is to monitor departments which will affect uh, internet freedom. This afternoon, we are going to have the security panel. And I'm sure um, the biggest problem will be with the security bureau instead of the government information office. I am sure the problem will not lie with the government chief information office and the uh, ITC. I'm sure if uh, there is a problem, it will come from other uh, areas of government. I think the secretary has raised his hand. Uh, I will give him some time. Thank you. I can hear very clearly Mr. Mock is behind the setting up of this INT Bureau, but he has digressed to talk about freedom and communication. And I'm sure I can say with the INT Bureau, we'll, we'll still have very free communication. As the industry representative, please do not tell me you support the INT Bureau, but talk to the members around you. Promote the INT Bureau with them. I'm sure his constituents would like to see him work even harder on this. Thank you. Mr. Lam Kwok Hong, first round five minutes. Well, Mr. Charles Mark is really um, telling you from his heart to support the INT Bureau. But first of all, I'd like to say in Hong Kong, we have always had done things to promote INT, but we have always lost money. That's the problem. The ITC is not accomplishing anything. Do you think you can accomplish anything with the Bureau? I'd like to ask you, Secretary, does Singapore have a Minister for Innovation and Technology, yes or no? Singapore is just like us. It's doing very well, but uh, do they have a dedicated ministry? I think Mr. C.Y. Leung is setting up this trap for himself. I don't understand it. We already have the ITC. You can just set up a statutory body and come back with a report for us every year, and that will do it. Next door, what what is it called? The management of the Hong Kong Convention and Exhibition Center, or the TDC, the Trade Development Center. It is not overseen by anybody. I go there, and they say, you cannot come in, and then I do not have entry. I can even go into the government headquarters, but not the Hong Kong CEC. So why set up this bureau? 
I think you should have carried out、um, a horizontal comparison. Of course, you've carried out vertical comparisons. Look at the cyber port. Siech Tong said that we、um, needed innovation and technology development, and so we needed、um, um, a place like the Silicon Valley. So,、um, do we see、um, silicon in、um, or in the cyber port? And、um, is there such a bureau in London? Um, places which have excelled in innovation and technology do not have a setup like、um, the Spiro. Look at um, um, uh, um, this um,、uh, SoftBank Japan.、Um, co the Communist Party asked、um, SoftBank to、um, uh, do something to、um, support. Um, the enterprise to、so、do not、um, pull over、uh, Hong Kong people's eyes. Do you know that、um, the、uh, relevant ministry in、um, the、uh, PRC asked、um, SoftBank in the PRC、uh, to do something?、Um, it's not.、Um, it is not that there there is a, a bureau like the IT bureau. In the mainland, so can you tell me、um, uh, where in the world、um, there is a minister、um, promoting INT?、Uh, in fact,、um, Chairman, we have in fact done some research in this、uh, respect, and I'll invite the Deputy Secretary to give、um, the member、um, more information. Yes, Chairman, in the UK there. Is a department of、um, business and innovation and skills responsible for science and research. But is there a minister? Is there a a, a minister,、uh, Mr. Leung Kwok Hong? Let、um, the officials、uh, finish their uh, uh, replies. I want to know whether these um, um, places have an establishment.、Um, Like that of a ministry or a minister. Now you know Greg So is、um, also a minister, and he、um, is also responsible for innovation and technology. And then in Singapore, there is a ministry of trade and industry responsible for science and technology. And they are also、uh, responsible for research and development policies. And so I've、um, given two examples:、um, the UK and Singapore. But I understand that in the UK, the setup is not like that. I think you should have given us a paper. I don't know what um, um, other places have done. So a time's up, and so under thirty nine. Uh, time's up.、Um, time's up, Mr. Long Kwa Hong. Sorry,、um, you've exceeded the、uh, time limit. You have already exceeded the time limit. It's now Miss Claudia Mo's turn. Five minutes, first round.、Um, time's up.、Uh, you 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 can listen to the、um, audio recordings.、Um, I I don't need to. Time was up. I. Strictly followed the、uh, um, finance committee procedure. In fact, uh, in fact, um, he had sufficient time to move a motion under Rule Thirty Nine. Um, and uh, he uh exceeded his time. I think we should re um listen to the um. Audio recordings. I、um, can remember that Leung Kwok Hong、um, mentioned Rule Thirty Nine before the bell rang. Now、um, you know、uh, um, he exceeded the five minutes when he、um, 
try to raise something else. Uh, Miss Claudia Mo, it's your turn. Can you stop the clock ticking? No. Um, I've already told you that it's your first round. In fact, you have been using your time. Mr. Leung Kwok Hong, please be seated. It's not your turn to speak. I'm not trying to uh, uh, ask you to leave the conference room, but now it's Claudia Mo's turn. Miss Claudia Mo. Mr. Leung Kwok Hong. Mr. Leung Kwok Hong, now if you want to speak, please speak outside this conference room. Miss Claudia Mo, it's your turn. The clock is ticking. Miss Claudia Mo, it's, it's still um, your time. Chairman, um, I think people get the um, impression that uh, you are not conducting the meeting fairly. Uh, I think um, we only need a few minutes to um, uh, listen to the um, audio recordings. So if I am wrong, prove me wrong. Just spend a few minutes listening to the uh, audio recordings. Why aren't you willing to do that? Chairman, the um, administration is uh, very eager to um, see this funding proposal passed. So the name of the Bureau is uh, Innovation and Technology. So the administration claims that it um, is eager to promote innovation and technology. But then I think the um, administration's motives and intentions are very clear as um, the purpose is to offer political rewards to CY Leung's fans. Do you think this matter is more urgent than matters relating to um, the work of the police force, the FSD, and um, the Education Bureau? Some people say that we need not be over worried. The setting up of the Bureau will have nothing to do with the curbing of um, the freedom of speech on the Internet. Um, officials have um, said that um, words of um, reference would be um, looked at, and people can't help thinking that there would there will be um, clamp down on um, internet freedom. You know that uh, in the in Ming Pao, it has been reported that um, some internet tools have been wiped out altogether. So it's like a, a roadblock on the internet highway. It may be a highway. It may be um um yeah uh, or high speed traveling may be allowed, but then um the vehicle has to be stopped in front of a roadblock. One country, two systems. Is it that we are following the example of the country? And as a result, we can go nowhere. Internet freedom is a fundamental tool for communication today. You are saying that um, the Bureau aims to promote the IT industries. I think this is not the truth. There is absolutely no trust between the government and society. So um, I'm not saying that um, this government should not do anything at all, but I think um, we have to protect internet freedom, and please tr do not um, 
um, do uh, things to clamp down on the freedom under the guise of uh, the promotion of innovation and technology. Mr. Jeffrey Lam. In fact, the business sector, the professional sector, the education sector, as well as young people all want to see the early establishment of the ITB. In fact, um, in the panels, we discussed the um, promotion of innovation and technology in Hong Kong on many occasions. So I don't agree uh, with uh, members when they say that um, the administration is trying to hastily um, push through this um, project. In fact, um, there have been papers provided to us, a lot of information has been provided to us. And some members are unable to differentiate between innovation technology and innovation and technology. Mr. Charles Mark has told us that he as well has his um, constituency support the setting up of the Bureau. And Ms. Emily Lau has said many times that um, innovation and technology are very important um, for Hong Kong's economic development. In fact, last year we intended to uh, um, go on a study tour to Israel to look at INT development um, there. But then we um, um, cancelled the trip because of security concerns. Um, some people are up Posing um, the setting of the bureau, I think there are political motivations behind such opposition. And um, I don't think anyone would like to see the pan Democrats blocking the proposal as this is going to affect Hong Kong's economic development. Um, Chairman, I agree with you. The Finance Committee should primarily be concerned about um, financial um, issues and funding proposals. I think replies have already been provided to most of the questions that Pan Democrats have raised. All sectors in society want to see the Bureau set up as soon as possible. And so please do not um, create more um, obstacles in the way. Please do not create um, uh, further delay. We have the uh, ITC at the moment, and uh, I think the policy is already there. So is it that with the establishment of the new Bureau, the Bureau can start its work um, immediately, and do you need um, more talents to support the work of the new bureau? Um, secretary, I think the permanent secretary can give a reply, Chairman. Thank you, Chairman. In fact, uh, we've um, already um, done a lot of preparation work for the setting up of the bureau. We've already got the um, commission, we've also got the uh, audio. We just hope that um, there can be uh, more um, dedicated policy input with the setting up of the new bureau. And we hope to see more dedicated high-level leadership um, provided by the new bureau. So the audio and the um, commission will come under the bureau. And so um, the bureau will be able to start work um, almost immediately. As to whether we need further talents to strengthen the establishment of the Bureau, now once the Bureau has been established, it can um, step up its um, liaison with um, the IT sector. And um, so I want to say that, uh, in fact, all the groundwork has already been laid. A lot of preparation has um, 
been made. Um, Chairman, I uh, support the idea of uh, having uh, additional sessions on Valentine's Day. As to, uh, and I want to say that um, um, we shouldn't be worried that the atmosphere will be ruined. I will uh, treat members to some chocolates, and also usually the celebration will take place in the evening. Mr. Raymond Chen, um, Mr. Jeffrey Lam said that uh, usually activities on Valentine's Day would be taking place in the evening, so do not ask the administration to have more sessions in the evening. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I think you have tried to be fair, at least you pretend to be fair. I don't know what has happened in the background, but you have been trying to balance the uh, demands of every party. Like the, the administration does not give five-day notice in order to add sessions. I think you have already blocked it. But with regard to the handling of the uh, German motion by Mr. Lang Kuo-hung, I think you have done it wrong. It was at 4 minutes 55 seconds. He said that he would like to invoke 39 in order to adjourn the meeting. I'd like to ask the secretariat who are present, can you be the witness? If you say you don't know, you don't know. But the timer has not beeped, and yet Mr. Leung Kuo-hung has already put forward that request. I think the clock should be fair. You can go back and look at the videotape uh, so that you have a clear conscience. Now, of course, Mr. Lam Kuo Hung cannot do it, and I can still do it. I can leave myself a minute to read our paragraph 39. Just now, the administration said that there has been sufficient or adequate uh, discussion on this issue. I don't can cannot agree. I have asked Mr. Greg so many times the structural issue. Why is it that the present structure is the best? Why is it the best way to use resources? Why don't you just go for civil servants? Or why don't you just um, have a new bureau secretary and then seek con or deploy civil servants from other bureaus to set up the bureau? But the secretary has not answered my question by making a comparison of the different structures. He talked about the panels, but at panels we have limited time. Each member would only have a few minutes. Last time talking about the smart ID cards, Mr. Ipcock him said we cannot ask about the details. We should leave the questions to the FC. So, Chairman, when the smart ID card funding request comes here, you must give us enough time to ask all the questions. Because the administration actually gave us a supplementary paper, but Mr. Ipcock him said we should not ask more questions. He said the buck will be passed to the FC. Even at Bill's committee, you understand we cannot ask questions there either. They were only talking about shifting the power from one to another, and then you were asking about the policies and the structural issues. They would not reply. And at the council, uh, in the debate on the resolution, we only had 15 minutes. Just go on the net and see what I have said in that speech. I asked many questions, but then the secretary did not answer us. And of course, he also only had 10 odd minutes, so he could not give a reply. So we never had an in-depth discussion on this issue. Later on, if members ask about policies, you say uh, they digress, but then you are creating a few positions, you are asking for a big sum of money, and it involves on the policies, objectives, functions, and nature of the Bureau. I think members have the right and also obligation to ask all the questions. Mr. Chairman, you said that you would be more lenient with the first and second rounds, but in the third and fourth rounds, we only have one minute or two. We will be asking a question spending um, one and a half minutes on it, and then this will just be cosmetic. We cannot get a reply, and with the pressure from you, Mr. Chairman, we cannot ask questions, and we can only put questions. Now I have all the time, and according to paragraph 39 of the uh, rules or finance committee procedure, I now move a motion to adjourn the meeting. Mr. Ray Chen has said that uh, he would like to invoke 39 in order to adjourn the meeting. According to paragraph 39, a member when speaking on the question may not speak more than once and shall not make a speech for longer than any time period as decided by the committee. Now I would say that every member would have three minutes. Those who would like to speak, please press the button. First of all, Mr. Ray Chen. Thank you, Chairman. Whether or not we endorse the funding request for setting up the INT Bureau, this is only secondary at this stage. We are talking about the integrity of the administration. 
the administration's relationship with this finance committee and the operation of the administration vis-a-vis -vis making a request at FC. Mr. C.K. Chen dares not face the cameras, and uh, even when he replies to us here or the press, he dares not face us in giving a clear reply. He said he gave us a letter, but then if that's the case, say what you said in the letter. Mr. Li Chek Yen said that they have not done this for 30 years. Why dare you not repeat it here at the meeting? I like to propose to adjourn the meeting because I like to clarify one issue first. I think there is circulation of this issue outside amongst the press. You have to answer this question here. What about this deadline on the 14th of February? Is it that you have to press the printer to print the budget? If we cannot endorse the um, item, is it that you cannot put this into the budget for 2015-16. However, there is this saying outside that is it because the um, FSTB doesn't want to cooperate. Even if this cannot go into the f budget, you can still print a supplement to the budget. And also we have a finance committee meeting on the 27th of February. Why can't we do it on the 27th of February? Why do you always say the 14th of the Feb February is a deadline? What is this um, insistence on the deadline? What about the 1st of April? Can we do it on the 1st of April? You have to come clean on that. You say the resolution will become invalid if we cannot have the funding approved on the 14th of February. Does it mean that you have to restart the entire process? You have to go to the panel, the council, to have people support the resolution and then also to go to the ESC? That is not my understanding. You seem to be painting that picture. You seem to be saying we must endorse it. No, even if we cannot endorse it, you can have short-term contracts in order to engage the necessary bureau secretaries. Well, I won't say you jumped the gun because you say the council has already supported the resolution. I think you're already working on this. Please, come clean on this before you force more finance committee meetings on us. Mr. Albert Ho. Chairman, many of us will agree that we should do much more to develop INT. But how should we do it? Should we do it like what we have in front of us? Do we have enough justification for the administration to be doing this? And, and what will happen if this is endorsed? I think all this has to do with a lot of policy considerations. Just now, Mr. Chairman, you said I will be more lenient with the first round, but uh, this is only a funding request, and you will not be so lenient in the ensuing rounds. You said we might be able to talk about policies in the first and second rounds. However, Mr. Chairman, if we are not members of the CI panel, we might not have been able to ask these questions. And also the committee to study the resolution, not all members were members of that committee. So we were not able to have a debate on the justifications. There are many very fundamental issues as uh, the members were asking. We used to have the ITB Bureau. And you will know that information and broadcasting cannot be separated from INT. Is it because broadcasting now is a sensitive issue, that it is very politicized? That is why the CE will only trust you, Mr. Grexo, because of your political party background. Even if there is a new bureau, the CE dares not via such sensitive policies to the new bureau. You are shaking your head, Mr. So, but you have to answer this question. Number two, Mr. Secretary, you have been in post for many years. In your bureau and the departments under you, 
Is it that you don't have time to formulate certain policies? You know, formulating and implementing policies are two separate matters. How many executive departments are there under your bureau compared to the food and health and transport and housing? What about your workload compared to them? Now you want to via certain responsibilities to another bureau. Now I think your bureau is not a big one, so I think there is already imbalance in the government structure. Other bureaus are much bigger than you and your bureau. We'd like to ask all these questions, and I believe many things should go back to panels for another round of discussion. So I support this motion, Mr. Tenka Pugh. I think、um, filibustering has become something regular. We had a marathon debate on the incinerator and also the three landfills. We started on the twenty fourth of October, and we only. Concluded on the ninth of January, we had ten meetings of four hours each, and every time we would spend over an hour on adjournment motions. So I have no confidence that we can conclude the item on the fourteenth, unless, as Mr. Wang Kuoheng said, we have to work、um, day after night and night after day. I can do. My mathematics. Last time, when we talked about the incinerator and the three landfills, we had used forty hours. But this time around, we have scheduled sixteen hours altogether. Now, I don't think we can even move beyond thirty-seven A. So, I'd like to ask the administration: What are you going to do? Do you have the resolve to go for overnight meetings? Or would you allow members to go back and have、um, dinner with their spouses on Valentine's Day? Because I don't think we can finish the task.、Um, last time we used forty hours, but this time around only sixteen hours in all. So I tend to be pessimistic, but, and of course I object to the motion. Next one, Mr. Charles Smock. Chairman, the secretary knows I support the bureau, and he asked me to. Try to persuade people around me. Well, you don't know how much I have done, and you don't know how difficult it is. I have said many things, but maybe they have not heard me.、Uh, maybe even the secretary has not heard me, and Mr. Liang Kuo Hong has not heard me. I told him. I, I talked about the name of the bureau in Singapore, and I have heard、um, the official. Talk about the name of the bureau, but in、uh, Singapore we have the IDA and MDA, and、uh, they are both under MCI. So this is absolutely at ministry level. Okay,、um, Secretary, what I want to say is there are opposition voices. Within the industry as well, but I have persisted so many years, and I won't change my stance. But、um, on the internet, there is this person called Jimmy, who is extremely unhappy about the entire procedure. He talks about the political atmosphere and the constitutional reform, and he said we should continue to boycott the governance of this government. And、uh, I also have to represent such voices. So please. Don't think that it is just a, a time issue that you can somehow pull this through, and you just、uh, criticize people for filibustering because you are just going to drive a bigger rift in society. I would like just to concentrate on the advantages of having this new bureau. However, members really have questions; they are asking questions. So perhaps not at the FC here. You should talk to them. And and try to answer their questions so you can save some time. I do that outside the meeting. But、uh, do you think that that is also a waste of time? Do you think that even if you、um, ask to talk to them, they will still filibuster here? But you should not despair. You should try to do it, even if、uh, there is very little possibility of positive persuasion. So I want the bureau to be set up. But here I don't want the two. Sides to be pointing fingers. It's all right if I'm in the wrong. Just、uh, endorse the motion because I think it is good for Hong Kong. And secretary, 
I hope we uh, should not be pointing fingers. Please don't criticize the uh, pro democracy camp for filibustering and say the public are discerning. Of course, the public are discerning. We don't have to tell them what to do. But I'm just concentrating on the issue. I will not support this motion to adjourn the meeting. But I hope you will concentrate on the IT bureau, its advantages and disadvantages, its issues concerning the policy and finances. Let us not digress. Ms. Claudia Mo. Um, one can't help feeling that the uh, FC's work is to support the uh, work of the administration. So um, if the administration wants the FC to pass a certain item, that uh, particular item should be passed as soon as possible. So um, just um, let the uh, administration uh, have its way. So uh, let's not um, keep talking about um, Valentine's Day chocolates. It's, it's embarrassing. Last year, we discussed the uh, Northeast anti development. Mr. Ng Long Singh, um, he um, um, persevered, so to speak, for a few weeks. But then on this occasion, the FC hasn't finished discussing the uh, Fisheries Development Loan Fund. But then uh, Tommy Zhang, you the chairman, um, said um, that um, some members uh, kept repeating themselves and so you would have to draw the line or you have to draw a line. Um, um, you said that in fact uh, it was um, really um, usual for chairman to uh, have to uh, draw a line. Um, as the members were repeating themselves, but then in fact some members um, had only had a chance to um, ask um, questions once. So you, in fact you were trying to. Um, um, cut the discussion short, but you um, did not admit that you were in fact um, ending the filibustering. And the administration um, gave you a helping hand by withdrawing the FDLF from the FC agenda. And as a result, FC could uh, proceed immediately to the um, discussion of the ITB. So the administration merely wants one thing to happen, and that is that the um, funding proposal for the Bureau should be passed as soon as possible. So um, Chairman, um, uh, the administration uh, might as well want to um, abolish the FC or the LegCo altogether so that no one will be standing in its way. The credibility of the Finance Committee is very important. And um, you, so the administration is forcing us to discuss the um, uh, ITB proposal. And um, as we are forced to discuss this item, then we should at least be given sufficient time to discuss the matter. So you, sh you should just give us uh, five minutes, three minutes, one minute, why not five seconds, so that there's only time for us to sneeze before the mic, and then time's up. Um, now, um, Chairman, uh, Ms. Claudia Mo uh, wants to um, criticize you, and as a result, she um, um, has to force herself to praise Mr. Ng Leung Singh for his performance um, last year as the chairman of the FC. And I believe um, Mr. Ng Leung Singh has never expected such um, um, praises from. Ms. Claudia Mo. No, Mr. Charles Mark. Um, there is not um, stop his friends uh, in a democratic camp um, from Philippa String. He dares not um, criticize them. I, I am sure Mr. Charles Mark is in a dilemma. I can understand um, that he is in a difficult position. He 
doesn't want to antagonize his friends, but at the same time, he wants the、uh, proposal to be passed as soon as possible. And I think if、um, Mr. Mock really wants the bureau to be set up as soon as possible, he should try his best to persuade his comrades to、uh, stop the bully bustering. So、uh, he cannot have it both ways. He. Cannot、um, please his friends and at the same time、um, secure the、uh, early passage of the funding proposal. There is a deadline for this funding proposal. We should all act in a pragmatic and responsible manner. We all understand that the setting up of the bureau will benefit Hong Kong's future economic development. We must not drag our feet, Chairman. You've erred on the relaxed side. You've allowed members to ask questions that they may have, and、uh, I don't think members should、um, resort to、um, moving adjournment motions or、uh, resorting to a thirty-seven A. Chairman, I think we must. Try to prevent members from filibustering, and we should, or、uh, there should be、um, uh, powers for the chairman to end members' filibustering at an appropriate time. As Mr. Tan Kapil has said, filibustering has become the、um, a norm. Uh, and I want to say that, in fact, I have rarely seen、um, Mr. Ng Lang Sing、um, smiling so happily in this、uh, finance committee、uh, in the past two years. I believe Mr. Charles Mark,、um, um, if he had been el-、um, directly elected in the geographical constituency, he would have opposed. Um, the setting up of the bureau, but luckily、uh, he is an FC member. You know,、um, do do you understand the、um, opposition party's、uh, tactics? They oppose whatever、um, the Liao administration proposes, so they are targeting、um, a particular person. And if、um, the situation is allowed to continue, then、uh, Hong Kong will see its doomsday very soon. They are opposing for the sake of opposing. They are、um, opposing under the guise of seeking procedural justice. They sought an adjournment last time. They sought an adjournment the time before last. So in fact, they, in fact, they 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 are not here to、um, ask questions about the funding proposal. They just want an adjournment. Now, if you really want to seek procedural justice, then f- follow the rules of the game properly. Now, if you have questions, ask the questions. If you have criticisms, make them. And I'm sure the administration um, uh, is willing to um, give um, replies. And、uh, Albert Chan. Has said that、uh, he has got a two hundred or three hundred amendments or motions, and、um, we have sixty-eight、um, members, and we're only going to have fourteen hours. And、um, members may have a lot of questions, but. S- Still, I want to know、uh, what some members mean by、um, being given un-、uh, insufficient time for discussion. What is meant by sufficient time for discussion? How come the pandemocrats have、um, claimed that? There is a lack of procedural justice, and so they want to seek procedural justice. They are opposing for the sake of opposing. What they are doing is not constructive at all. And I want to say that I object to Mr. Chen Shichun's motion, Mr. Leung Yuchong. I want to say that I respect、um, the remarks made by Mr. Leung Shichun, but、uh, Mr. Leung Shichun is accusing us of um, abusing um, FC procedures. 
um, in the name of seeking procedural justice. I want to point out that what members um, um, are doing are in accordance with um, the FC procedure. If we had breached the rules, the uh, chairman would have disallowed us from moving such motions. Um, you may uh, think that we can ask as many questions as we like, but then um, are our officials giving us um, convincing replies? We may um, keep asking questions, but then they just um, repeat the answers that they've already prepared. So, so I want to, uh, Mr. Leung to understand that what we have been doing is in strict accordance um, to the um, FC rules and the rules of procedure. Chairman, I want to say that I support Mr. Leung Chi Chun's motion. To adjourn the dis uh, Mr. Chen Chichun's, uh motion to uh, adjourn the discussion. <coughs> you um, said that you had been um, conducting FC meetings fairly. You said that you didn't want to waste um, meeting time, but in fact. I want to say that, in fact, you are only um, obeying the uh, orders of the administration. You haven't been acting fairly and impartially. Mr. Long Kwok Hong uh, asked you to um, listen to the audio recordings or to um, see the uh, video and uh, recordings, but you said that uh, you had already come to your judgment. I think you should have listened to the uh, audio recordings, but you decided um, to have your own way because uh, you were the chairman. As a chairman, you should have acted fairly and impartially. In fact, um, other chairman, I believe, would have chosen to listen to the audio recordings. So why have you chosen to act uh, in such a manner? Mr. Wu Chiwai. Chairman, I want to say that uh, I support the um, motion to adjourn the discussion. You said that you would allow members to ask questions on policy matters in the first and second rounds. But I want to point out that the setting up of a new bureau is an important matter. We have to clarify all our doubts. We can't um, give the green light hastily. And carelessly, we have the duty to monitor the work of the administration. The secretary said that um, there could be a review at a later stage, and creative industries might come under the new bureau at a later stage. But then I think it's important that we um, clarify all the important concepts before the setting up of the new bureau. We have to make sure that the Bureau can do its work well. That's the first point. Second, when we ask questions, uh, we uh, are told that we need to bear in mind the deadline of uh, 14th of February. And um, Chairman, if we re keep repeating ourselves, then um, you may um, disallow um, our questions. But then, Chairman, I want to say that even uh, when we ask new questions, you may still disallow us from asking those questions. And I think the biggest problem before us is that officials keep repeating their replies, and so there is no genuine exchange of views in the meeting. Mr. So. 
said that um, there was a difference between an, an IT bureau and the ITC. He uh, emphasized the importance of um, interbureau cooperation and coordination. In fact, in environment, in uh, the environmental uh, protection. Um, policy area in terms of waste recycling. We uh, also need cross-bureau cooperation and coordination. And so does it mean that we'll um, need to set up another bureau without having to ask whether there may be duplication of resources and establishment? More than so at least you should allow us to ask questions and you as the chairman should only adjudicate whether we are repeating ourselves. Next, Mr. Lee Chat Yan. Chairman, we were discussing the relationship between the executive and the legislature in studying into funding requests, and then uh, people say we will filibuster, and then Mr. C. Y. Leung is asking people to identify the filibustering members. Now I like to say it in no unclear terms. Well, yes, because we think what you have done is outrageous. There are these few things. Number one, how do we view the INT Bureau? I have said many times already, and I'd like to remind you that if an administration wants to strangle or stifle um, INT, how can it claim to be doing something to promote INT? You must remember we have the Hong Kong television. There are many uh, talents who have already come together to form. Um, a company, but then uh, they were not given a license. Mr. Grexo, your bureau did not issue the license. And when the administration stifles creative industry, uh, then at the same time it claims to be promoting INT. Can you trust it? Number two, is it that the bureau would really like to accomplish something, or is it a way for CY Leung to dish out political rewards? Before the bureau is set up, it is already said that um, Mr. Lao Ming Wai would be the under secretary. Is it that C. Y. Leung just wants to set up a bigger structure of government so he can dish out more positions to his fans and supporters? Number three. The administration is depriving and derogating from the power of scrutiny of the LegCo. This is a very extraordinary president. You have withdrawn four finance committee meetings and put them into the budget. Those four items were not subject to the normal kind of scrutiny because the FC would not be able to scrutinize such new expenditure items. As you know, under the budget, we do not have the latitude to do item by item scrutiny. Last night, uh, the administration replied to us, but the secretary just now could not or dare not face up to it. This is what you wrote. You said this was done 30 years ago, and now you are regressing by 30 years. You are dating back the relationship between the legislature and the executive to the British colonial era. Is it that you are nostalgic about the colonial era? We are regressing to 30 years ago. I think this is very regrettable. Next, Mr. Wong Kwok-Hing. Chairman, I believe when the public watch this meeting, they will be clear whether the pro-democracy camp would really like to ask questions like what they said before. Uh, is it that the chairman is not allowing them to ask questions? No. Last time they moved a motion to adjourn the meeting, and they are doing it again. The meeting, had, the public have to understand what is meant by adjourning the meeting. This is uh, one of the ways they do filibustering and waste time. I have written some lines to describe the situation. A German after a German, there are so many adjournments. You just want to object to the item, and you do not care how much money is wasted. The people of Hong Kong, please understand why they want to propose a German after a German. We are wasting time already. It is almost 10:30, and next time they are going to move in a German again.
they use this tactic to waste the time of this committee, and by so doing, they are wasting public money. This is the fact. Members of the public, please serve the internet or ask the electrical secretariat to see how much public money has been spent on pleasure trips or study tours to try to understand the experience of other countries and how much has been spent by the pro-democracy members. They understand that we should learn from other people and work for Hong Kong's future. However, they still want to object this item. They still want to debar the present term of government from doing this. Members of the public, please go on the internet and see how much money has been spent by them to go overseas and yet they come back to debar the setting up of the INT Bureau. They are working against the interest of the members of the public. In March, they say they are responding to an invitation to visit Germany. This is such an abnormal phenomenon. Chairman, I think you have been fair. And as I said, you only have two ways out. One, exercise your power as chairman to stop the filibustering, or you consult members to hold marathon meetings up to 72 hours. Let us tough it out with them. I think it will be difficult for you to stop the filibustering. And last but not least, I'd like to congratulate Mr. Ng Lang Singh. A fair judgment has been made on your performance. Next, Ms. Elizabeth Quatt. Thank you, Chairman. I think the opposition camp has lost their mind in staging this filibustering. They just want to delay matters and oppose uh, to every item. Many members talked about procedural justice. They say what they do complies with the Finance Committee procedures. I think they're abusing the procedures. Every time we have an FC meeting, they propose to adjourn the meeting, and then that would make a uh, waste over an hour, and then they would invoke 37A. They do it with every item. And then they say, no, we are very concerned about people's livelihood, and the IT Bureau has nothing to do with people's livelihood. And sometimes they can grandstand to say we should not allow property developers to be hegemonistic, and we need a multifarious kind of economy. But then when we go for INT, they say it is not related to livelihood. I think they are speaking nonsense, and they abuse the procedures to an outrageous level. They can talk big. They say uh, this is according to the FC procedures. Just like in Le Ming Choi Secondary School yesterday, uh, the Bureau Secretary said something which was not pleasing to the ears of Mr. Albert Chen, so he would like to adjourn the meeting. He wouldn't find one remark pleasing from the administration, and he would be issuing a threat immediately. I have heard uh, many members say they have a reason to oppose and ask questions, but then they those are not reasons at all. Mr. Charles Mock, please uh, assess whether the so-called reasons advanced by the pro-democracy camp are reasonable. Uh, they are, in fact, opposing uh, the potential candidates who will become the secretary and undersecretaries. And you say this is a kind of political reward. But we are talking about Mr. Charles Mock and his constituency. Mr. Mock, can you explain what advantages will he gain if this bureau is set up? Does it mean you will get more votes for another term? Do you think that is a kind of political reward? Is it that you also support CY Leung? I think all this is ridiculous. And I don't know um, why Ms. Emily Lau is uh, so intent about celebrating Valentine's Day. Is she in love? If yes, please let us know. 
And if we have meetings on Valentine's Day, I will have to give up four district activities to meet the public. And if like what Mr. Wang Kuo Heng said, next one, Mr. Ip Kin Yun, Chairman. A few members mentioned the opposition camp. Well, I don't think we should use that kind of um, nomenclature. Why is it that the pro-democracy camp puts emphasis on INT, but we oppose the setting up of the INT Bureau? I think we should reflect upon that. If pro-democracy members support INT, and yet we oppose to the setting up of such a bureau, is it because we are irrational? Some members were trying to describe the pro-democracy camp as full of irrational people. But let us ask this question. If we want to promote film development in Hong Kong, does it mean we need a film development council or bureau? If we object to the setting up of a film development bureau, does it mean we object to developing the film industry in Hong Kong? No. Whether or not we support a bureau is subject to many factors for consideration. If you simplify the matter to that uh, we object to having a uh, multi-pillar economy, that we object to INT just because we object to the setting up of the INT Bureau, I think that is illogical. I hope in the ensuing discussion, we should put our finger at the issue itself. I think um, I find this meeting arrangement very uncomfortable. I think uh, there is the intention to add two more sessions without much notice. I remember earlier on when we discussed salary adjustment for civil servants, we also considered whether there should be more sessions. And yet we did not, even if that was a major livelihood issue. And now we are adding more and more sessions. And at the same time, a few important items have been withdrawn. Uh, they had to do with education and the marine police. I find that very mind-boggling. If the arrangement is to allow this INT Bureau to enjoy supremacy over other items, then it seems we are only working for one objective. Why is it that our meetings have come down to such a situation? I think the present situation is inappropriate. I believe we should go back to the right track, and I repeat what I said last time. If we can revive the items that were withdrawn, that would be appropriate. Mr. Yip Kwok Him, uh, please use only two minutes because our time is almost up and I still need to say something. Okay, procedural justice is something the pro-democracy camp uses to criticize the administration. They are saying um, the administration should not withdraw certain items. But look at this meeting. The pro-democracy camp is using delaying tactics and filibustering in order to paralyze the meeting and the council. This is the time to discuss why we want to set up the INT Bureau. But you continue to adopt filibustering tactics, uh, including a motion to adjourn the meeting. Every time we have to have a debate on the adjournment motion, and then you also want to adjourn the item. Now we give you the time, but you don't spend it on a legitimate discussion. Do you call this procedural justice? Do you say, can, can you still say that administration is damaging procedural justice? Who is doing it now? In fact, if you really make the best use of these 10 odd hours, I'm sure Mr. Wu Chi Wai's questions and other members' concerns will be given enough time and there would be an adequate discussion. And of course, after the Secretary has spoken, members will still be entitled 
to their own decision. This is what a discussion should be. You should use the meeting's time to seek understanding of the issue. And I hope the pro-democracy camp, the opposition camp, will not be so childish to object to everything Mr. C.Y. Leung proposes because you are grinding Hong Kong to a halt. Thank you, Chairman. Members, four more members are standing in the queue. But we can have the meeting only up to 10.30. Therefore, Mr. Ray Chan's motion to adjourn the meeting um, will become invalid, and the debate will not be rolled over to the next Finance Committee meeting. <laughs> Concerning members' criticisms that I um, refused to listen to the um, audio recordings. I want to tell members that they can um, always um, go back to our um, recordings. And um, if you go to the uh, internet look, um, and you, you uh, or to our archives, you can only see that our meeting had gone on uh, for one hour, four minutes, 35 seconds. And you won't know whether um, Mr. Leung Kwok Hong had spoken for five minutes, two seconds, or four minutes, um, 52 uh, 55 seconds. And in fact, but then you can hear him say, oh, time's up. And then um, the timer uh, um, beeped, and as a result, I uh, invited Miss Claudia Mo to speak. So um, I hope you understand the chairman's difficulty, and I think it's a waste of time if I um, have to refer to the audio recording. So time's up today. Meeting adjourned.